Hello, welcome back to the channel. Seems like a very long time ago that I did anything with a new radio. But today we're going to do something with the new radio. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. My goodness. Look at the size of this thing. Sneeba Fang or Baofeng. My gosh. That truly is a beast. Let's zoom out. Trying to get the lights in a better position. I think we're there, aren't we? Okay, so this is the UV25, I believe. I'll put the actual uh, details on the screen for you in a second. Um, this is an absolute beast. Look at the size of it. I'm um, just looking at the front. We've got this uh, quite a nice uh, volume on off control and uh, the color screen there. Um, this is obviously uh, seen on a lot of these uh, more modern radios uh, recently this type of enclosed on off volume control i'm not sure if i like it or not i'll have to i'll have to wait and see it's got an led on the top we've got a male sma connector there as you can see and like i say the weight of this thing um on the side nice uh, rubberized ptt two function buttons there uh, on the back we've got a usb-c connection with a little flap there and a little charging light just there which we can test out in a second on the side as you'd imagine it's your conventional microphone port there and speaker port you get a belt clip not not too rugged a belt clip you get a USB charging cable you get God knows what's in that that's like an adapter mains adapter and you get this rather weird gooseneck um, I'm guessing it's an antenna very odd yes you get this sort of tactical antenna now this is a antenna that you clicks and moves and stays in place so yeah quite an unusual unusual antenna I have to get that onto the um, V&A just to see what kind of uh, results we get with it but you can see there you can bend it into whatever shape you want you get a wrist strap and of course you get a plug-in charger now I don't suggest anybody uses any of this if you've got already got existing USB chargers go and use those right let's take a quick look at the manual there we go usual short manual no um, product well, just UV25 written on the front of it uh, not really any specs let's just see what it's claiming to output in terms of power there's some specs for you on receive there claims to have a sensitivity of 0.25 microvolts at 12 decibel cyanide we'll put that on the on the meter and check that out it doesn't really say anything else uh in terms of uh power i can't see anywhere where it mentions the transmit power i don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing um it claims here to have a frequency range on receive of 65 to 108 so that's commercial uh 136 to 174 220 to 260, 400 to 520, and then on transmit, 2 meters, 4 meters, and UHF. So, don't know, there's a frequency steps, 2.5k up to 50k, 1000 uh, memory channels, DTMF, all the usual gubbins, uh, Roger Beep, and everything else supports NOA weather reception, as you would expect from a sort of rugged looking radio. But the one thing, the one radio this really reminds me of, I'm going to get down off the shelf and uh, you'll see what I mean. Just hang on one moment, please. Inspiration comes in many forms, doesn't it? Uh, as soon as I saw, saw that radio, it really reminded me of this lovely old Kenwood 2 meter radio I've got here. Um, I've done a separate video on this on the channel. If you want to have a look, this is the TR2500 and I did a battery, uh, lithium battery replacement. You can see it's uh, powering up, and um, let's just check it. I wonder if it still works. Lamp on, yeah. Don't know about the display, but um, yeah, that's still working. Got the uh, battery, new battery in there, um, and uh, yeah, it just really reminded me of this of this radio in the terms of size. I mean, look, it's it's almost identical, isn't it? <laughs> So this is a real retro radio, this one, uh, in terms of that. And I, I'm guessing it's a similar weight as well. Got a similar sort of weird antenna, too. Okay, not the same on the top, but you catch my drift. They, uh, they, I think they definitely took some inspiration from the older radios, and they've styled this probably to appeal to 
gentlemen of a certain age, let's just say, because obviously modern radios are much smaller. Let me just show you by comparison. There's the uh, Quan Sheng and the 4X. Um, and look at the size difference. <laughs> All essentially offer pretty much the same features as this. Obviously the Quan Sheng quite a bit more adaptable. But I, like I said, I think they've made this as a sort of a brick. I mean, I think you'd have to say you could almost, this would almost be classed as a weapon. You could certainly, <laughs> with this kind of weight, you could certainly leverage uh, some damage with that. That's for sure. Let's go and grab the scales. I'm intrigued to see how much it weighs. 586 grams. Just to give you some idea, there's no antenna plugged into that, but let's weigh up the FT4X. 247 grams. And Quan Sheng, 252. So, yeah, I'm not making that up. That is the weight. Nearly 600 grams. And there's the beast. My oh, goodness, I've just took the, um, the screen protector off as well, and the screen I can report, it's got a bit of a thumbprint from me on it already, but the screen I can report is not scratched or marked. I can't say the same about the Quan Sheng actually. The screen on the Quan Sheng when I first got that was, was, was pretty rough, it was kind of like a matte. It still is not great, I mean a cheap radio, but I don't know, the screen on that's kind of got like a matte, a weird matte, you see it, a weird matte finish. The screen on that is actually really nice really nice so we're off to a good start already i think hopefully um so what we'll do i think we'll spin it over and just see how that battery comes off it does indeed unscrew it's looking like it's just two screws it's um i'm not i'm thinking with the size of that battery you probably wouldn't need to hot swap it out in the field because in terms of on receive particularly i don't you know, wouldn't have thought this consumes any more power than the other radios and there we go, we fully removed the one, revealing the actual inside of the radio. Now, bear in mind, this radio only cost me £30 and was delivered here to the UK in four days from China. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, here we have the uh, claimed voltage of 7.4 volts. And, it, and this is a metal body insert here, which I think is probably where most of this weight is coming from. So... Um, Let's just have a little look at the battery. There on the battery, we're looking at uh, BLUV25, 2800 milliamp hour hour, charge limit voltage 8.4. So again, quite a substantial battery. I would guess, looking at that, that that's probably fitted with 18650s, probably um, maybe four 18650 batteries in there, maybe. Um, I'm, not, I'm certainly not gonna take it apart. It looks like it may well come apart possibly but uh, i'm not going to do that i want to use it so let's get it charged up first it looks like you can charge it off of the radio which is nice let's just plug a lead in and there you go we've got our red charging light so i think to be fair what we'll do is we'll let this battery fully charge which probably won't take too long and then once it's fully charged we'll stick it on the power meter and see what it's doing on the three different bands it claims to transmit on Right, I've set this so the span is, I'm holding it like a walkie-talkie because that's how you would hold this antenna conventionally. So down the bottom here we've got 144 and that looks like it's pretty good down at that bottom end. It goes off as you go up towards 433 and then it comes back down and it's not quite as good on UHF but it's still relatively re relatively reasonable. So that's the sort of graph you'd expect to see. So I imagine there's some kind of loading going on in here anyway. Let's not stress this around too much. But yeah, I think on, on, the, on the balance of it, that looks uh, as I would expect. A very unusual antenna, incredibly strange. But I suppose, would it be a, considered a tactical antenna? Because you can fold this and it's kind of got this, um, you know, it stays in position. I don't know, but it's certainly quite rugged and um, certainly tests okay on the, the Nano VNA as far as I can see. I think what I'm going to do, another test I can do, I'm going to put this battery back on the radio and then we'll see if you can actually use it while it's plugged in and charging. Uh, that's something some of, the, some of the packs don't let you do, which would obviously massively extend your range if you could have a USB um, charger in your, uh, in your rucksack along with this radio and then just connect them up. So let's try that. Look at that, top right, I missed that. 10 watts it's claiming on that sticker. Wow, we should certainly test that. And um, 
yeah, that'll be interesting to see, won't it? I will take this out on the road as well. Uh, we'll do a, a test back to base or a test with Mick with this radio. I haven't done that for a while, so I think we should do that on this video. And I can confirm it does indeed work when it's plugged in and charging. Um, I wouldn't imagine it takes power from the USB <laughs> when it's doing that, just from the battery. So there must be some kind of diode in there of some kind. But yes, it certainly does operate fully whilst it's charging. Another good feature because not all radios will let you do that. Right, to switch from memory into VFO, you, the manual is actually wrong. It told you this button. It's this button. You push and hold and it will change between the bands and it will then change between uh, the VFO and the memory. So push and hold and then up and down to adjust and you can adjust your steps in the in the in the in the software as well if you push that one then you get the your menu options come up here vox delay and it's really nice this you can scroll through and set your tone your roger your roger beep all the usual gubbins and nice and clearly laid out in here um as you can see i think the days of the uv5r are definitely dead aren't they this is can you believe this is a 30 pound radio uh, 30 pound in weight probably but 30 30 uk pounds absolutely fantastic look at that screen it's a really nice color screen on it as well green led at the top there for receive i've just turned the squelch off so we can just um, while we're waiting for it to charge it's still charging we're gonna we're gonna stick it on receive and see what kind of um what synad readings we can get with it okay so we've got the sig generator on 435 meg on one microvolt and we're connecting the radio directly into the SIG gen. Um, there's no adapters, that's straight in. Okay, so uh, we're going to fire it up now and see what it's doing on one microvolt. There's our one microvolt signal, nice and strong. Let's have a look at it on the cyanide meter. There we go, off the scale on the cyanide meter, which is what we want to see. Now we'll start to wind the quality down and we'll start to see the and here the signal dropping I'll just give it a bit more volume there you go so there's 12 dB synad we're doing 0.13 of a microvolt which is actually better than it actually claimed in the book I think I'll just have to get the book to remind me but um, this is as low as my my signal generator can go without attenua attenuators and that's 0 0.10 microvolts so that's on 433 so that that's um that's pretty decent um that compares with the sort of yesus of this world uh so not too shabby at all so let's try that at uh on 144 megs i'm only going to do uhf and vhf okay so now we're on uh two meters 145 there one microvolt going in Make a bit of volume on there there's our signal there's our uh display it does have an active display there and then we'll just pop the cyanide meter into into view and we'll start to lower the signal down and then we can see a weird chopping effect there i don't know quite what that was it didn't seem to like the signal being lowered down I'm too worried about that let's Go down to 0.19 of a microvolt. We're now down to 12 dB synad, which is our marker, and it's doing 0.14 microvolts. So again, that's pretty natty, pretty natty indeed. We'll go, we'll go all the way down again, and it's that's as low as we can go. That's 0 0.10 microvolts. So again, very good, very good uh, received performance. Right, that's one big battery in there. That took quite a while to uh, top that battery up. There's my uh, rig for testing the power. So we'll switch the radio on. It's now fully charged. And we're going to go up and test on VHF, okay? And we'll see what power it's doing. We'll just put the power meter on and I'll zoom you into that. I'll zoom you into that so you can see what it's doing. Okay. So here we go, this is the 2 meter power test. There we go, we're doing 10 watts, so it's definitely doing what it says on the tin. 10 watts into the dummy load on 2 meters. Let's try that again. 10 watts. So that's 100% genuine, finally. 
a Chinese radio that does what it says on the tin. Okay, let's move over to UHF. Okay, this is the UHF test and we're on 435-500. Let's pick up the frequency there. And again, 10.9 was that, it just flicked up. But as near as damn it, 10 watts. So that is definitely again doing exactly what it said it was going to do. So yeah, in terms of power, you're going to definitely get the power, but you've got the weight to go with that. So don't don't just forget, <laughs> you have got really good power with this radio, but you've also got the extra weight. But I think it's a really nice looking radio. Let's take a look. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that really does look really really nice. Um, it you know for thirty pounds, what you get when you feel this in your hand for thirty pounds, it'll it'll uh, blow your socks off. I'm telling you, really good keypad. Nice big big numbers, which might be important for people of a certain age. And a decent screen, decent size, really easy to read. But it is a heavy radio. But I tell you what, I reckon the battery in this would probably last you all week. You probably have to charge it once a week. Uh, seriously big battery in this radio. I don't think, really think the video really does it justice. It um, For what you're paying and what you're getting, it's um, really, really nice. And um, you know, I'm, I'm almost tempted to go and get another one uh, for this kind of money because they are really substantial. Um, I don't know whether, in, in as a daily carry, you, that you would swap it for one of the other radios because you know, even like the Quan Sheng, obviously, it's not 10 watts, but it's so much more lighter. So for a daily carry, I wouldn't think you would. But if you was like after a radio that you needed, you know, you was going. Maybe somewhere like doing a uh, an off-road event in a car, let's say, for instance, you wanted a really rugged radio that was going to last you two or three days. You didn't need to worry about charging it. it it's going to survive the bangs and the knocks and everything. And it's just going to work, work, work without need charging. Then this is your man because you can just chuck it on the dashboard, throw it on the seat, keep it in your rucksack, whatever. And uh, you're not going to need to charge it. It's just going to work. It's a huge battery. It's just, you know, unless you are rag chewing the whole time it's never gonna and of course you can turn the power down as well um, there's no <laughs> reason to pump 10 watts uh, out there if you don't really need it particularly if you're in close quarters you could take it right the way down to the lowest power setting I suppose we should check that really now shouldn't we let's see what the lower power settings do uh, we'll just do that on uh, VHF okay so I'm going to handheld for this um, 145 500 we're on low power as you can see there in the top left corner of the screen and we'll key up now and see what it's going to do. Okay, so low power is 2.6 watts. 2.6 watts on low. To get into the menu to change the power settings, I'm just, I'm just trying to avoid the glare of the, of the light there. You tap this and then you simply go, sorry, you go to, it's on low. So we tap the little green icon and then we can go up to middle, tap the green icon again. Now it's in middle power. And then we press the red button to go home. It's changed to M there for middle power. So let's see what that's doing. So it's 5.2 watts, 5.13 watts in middle power. And high is 10 watts. So you can definitely uh, drop this down to give you more operating time. There's no real reason to go over 5 watts if I'm being honest, but you know, it's there if you need it, if you need that extra bit of pop. We all do all the tests out on the road with Mick uh, on the 10 watt setting, I think, uh, just because we can. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how it performs. I and mean, you can look back at some of my other videos and see how it performs next to those other radios if you're interested. So um, I think we'll pop the tactical antenna on top of it and just see how that looks. And then maybe tomorrow, if not in the week, I'll get out there and we'll do our usual testing as we do with Mick on all the radios and uh, we'll see how it goes. And this is quite the thing. We've got the tactical antenna on. Look at the uh, length of that. That really, <laughs> it's like a silencer on a, on a gun, isn't it? It's, uh, it's got that kind of look about it. And this uh, antenna, I'm guessing you could fold that over if you was putting it in your backpack, sort of military style, like a Harris radio maybe. Um, but um, cool looking radio. 
and just the weight. You've got to really feel this thing in your hand to get a, sort of an idea of the weight of that. It's got some serious heft to it, and um, and it's it's super super rugged. I mean that's that's metal. That's not plastic. All this bracket is metal. That's metal. This I think is probably plastic painted with the gold paint, but um, come on, it's it's a thirty pound radio, and. Um, what do you kind of expect but I mean it's so ragged and so well made and obviously you know there'll be, there'll be a desktop charger for it not that you're going to need to charge it unless you are serious about what you do with your radios I don't think you're going to need to charge this bad boy <laughs> I better charge it once about once a month all right I figured I would show you the other features just while I'm here the top one there as you can see on the display, it's got your NOAA, the weather frequency on there, WX. Then the other button, the sec you can program these to do what you want. This is going to bring up the radio. This is uh, the, the commercial radio. I'll just flick this on very quickly. I mean, I don't know how many people use that feature, but it's there if you need it. Obviously, you can turn it back off and on. Um, to flip between the A and the B... You've got your, your, your VFOs, it's both on VFO setting here. Simply pressing that red button there, flicks between my, the, the either one. It's got dual watch as well, so it'll watch the other one while you're listening to the other one and it'll break over the top if it hears anything. And then on the bottom button here, it's programmed by default as the LED. And you've got on, flashing, and off. It's three states. So there you go, that's what all the buttons do. Obviously they're configurable in software. I'm not going to go through the program, programming of this radio on this video. There are other videos on that. Uh, as It's fairly straightforward because it just follows the same convention that all your other Baofeng, and that is the correct way of, of pronouncing it, Baofeng radios program up. I imagine this, I don't know, but it probably will be available to program up in Chirp. So... Um, it's probably going to be a two-part video this um this one as the first part and then the testing with mick as the second part because there's quite a lot to cover because it's quite a big radio and uh, i think it deserves it when you get like a uh something that's so unusual as this and i think i think may do quite well for them because it just is unusual and it is a total beast and uh I think people are going to like it, particularly the collectors out there like myself that just like to collect the odd radios that come in from China and this is certainly one and it's certainly one that's really good value and so far seems to perform very very well indeed.